The time when humans had to fight directly on the battlefield are over. Russia is unveiling a machine that can hunt, strike, and return on its own without a single pilot on board. It's not a reconnaissance drone, nor a kamikaze UAV like those used by the West. This is something entirely different, heavier, smarter, and built to penetrate skies where no one dares to fly. They call it Okotnik, which means the hunter. But what truly worries the world isn't its stealthy shape, it's the real purpose behind its creation. What exactly is this machine, and how does it surpass the UAVs of the West? Let's find out. Over the past two decades, the military world has witnessed an almost default doctrine of unmanned warfare, one shaped by the West built on three principles slow, cheap, and overwhelming in numbers. Just look at what's happened. The United States defined the game with the MQ-9 Reaper, a $32 million machine capable of only 370 km per hour, yet famous for its endurance of more than 24 hours over low-intensity battlefields. It carries 1.7 tons of Hellfire missiles and precision bombs for prolonged strikes. Similarly, China flooded the export market with the Wing Lung 2, a low-cost Reaper clone priced between two to three million dollar, with a top speed of about 370 km per hour and a payload of just 480 kilograms. Dozens of nations across Africa and the Middle East have used them effectively to hunt insurgents with Chinese-guided bombs. Israel, meanwhile, follows a completely different philosophy. Instead of massive hunters, it dominates through swarms of smaller machines such as the Heron for reconnaissance, and most famously the Harap, a loitering munition only 3 meters long, that dives onto its target at 185 kilometers per hour, detonating with a 23 kilograms warhead. At under $1 million per unit, Israel can launch swarms of them, applying a doctrine of speed and saturation where hundreds of kamikaze drones pave the way for manned aircraft attacks. That's their strategy, using quantity and patience to overwhelm weaker opponents. However, all these models share one fatal weakness. They're perfect for the deserts of Afghanistan, but fragile against modern air defense systems. The Reaper is a slow-moving target for radar-guided missiles. It's utterly unsuitable for skies protected by Patriot batteries or fifth-generation fighters. In other words, they're useless in a great power conflict. And that's where Russia, a nation long lagging behind in proven battlefield UAV operations, decided to take a bold leap no one expected. Moscow didn't bother copying the Reaper. It didn't go for the cheap route. Instead, it unveiled the Sukhoi S-70 Okotnik B, simply known as the Hunter. This is an autonomous strike aircraft designed to directly face the best of what the West has. The Okotnik B is a monster, a 20-meter flying wing stealth design with a maximum takeoff weight of nearly 20 tons. It's less like a drone and more like a robotic bomber. Powered by an AL-31F turbofan engine, it can reach almost 1,000 km per hour, placing it in the same class as China's Sharp Sword Heavy UAV. Its range exceeds 6,000 km, allowing deep penetration into contested airspace. But the real mystery and drama lies in Russia's new doctrine. The Okotnik B is designed as a loyal wingman flying alongside the Su-57 stealth fighter. It's not just a drone, it's a heavy stealth combatant capable of carrying up to 2.8 tons of bombs or missiles. Its estimated cost over $100 million per unit, once in stable production, makes it nearly as expensive as a frontline fighter jet. Why so costly? Because it's built for great power conflict where stealth payload and autonomy matter far more than affordability. It's mission to fight NATO and evade Patriot air defenses. The strategic contrast couldn't be clearer. The U.S. is moving towards stealth and loyal wingmen, but in a distributed way. The Boeing MQ-28 Ghost Bat with 11.7 miller wingspan 1.5 ton payload under $20 million is designed to fly in swarms alongside the F-35 and can be expendable if necessary. At the other extreme is the secretive RQ-180, a stealth ghost roughly bomber-sized, rumored to cost over $200 million per unit for reconnaissance missions. The U.S., Bets on variety endurance with the Reaper swarm tactics with the Ghost Bat and stealth with the RQ-180. Russia took the opposite approach. It's betting everything on one single heavyweight hunter. China has its own sharp sword with two-ton payload 1,000 kilometers per hour, but it remains in limited testing. Russia, by contrast, has already flown the Okotnik B in joint exercises with the Su-57. In this race, China may flood the skies with numbers, but Russia aims to punch through the storm with a single massive predator. Even Europe once dreamed of a stealth UAV, the Neuron, with two-ton payload and 980 kilometers per hour, but it remained just a prototype demonstrator abandoned due to its cost exceeding $100 million. The S-70 Okotnik B is not just an aircraft, it's a statement of military doctrine raising a critical question. 
In this new era of aerial warfare, can an expensive AI-powered stealth combat robot redefine the battlefield, rendering the old strength in numbers strategy obsolete? And the biggest mystery remains, how has Russia managed to surpass the West bringing such a complex machine into combat trials so quickly? What makes the Okotnik be more than just a bigger drone is the combination of attributes it brings together. Attributes that until now were normally spread across different platforms and doctrines. Western approaches fracture capability across endurance platforms, Reaper cheap mass producibles, Wing Lung FPVs and small expendables, Harop Kamikaze. Okotnik B collapses those roles into a single survivable asset designed for deep decisive effect. First scale and survivability. The S-70's size and internal weapons bays allow it to carry heavy precision-guided munitions, internally preserving stealth while delivering strikes with the kind of ordnance once reserved for crude bombers. Internal carriage matters, it reduces radar cross-section, enables standoff tactics, and lets Okotnik B strike high-value targets without immediately advertising its loadout. That is a structural advantage over Reaper-style external stores and over small kamikaze systems that must expose themselves to deliver effects. Second speed and reach. Operating near 1,000 km per hour and with a range measured in thousands of kilometers, Okotnik B can close strike and withdraw before slower interceptors or many point defenses can effectively react. This combination of speed with stealth changes engagement geometry, it shortens reaction windows, and forces defenders into an intercept or lose dilemma at much higher tempo than today's kamikaze swarms create. Third mission profile and autonomy. Okotnik B is designed for complex coordinated missions, not random attrition. As a loyal wingman, it can act as sensor decoy jamming node or strike platform in coordinated packages with Su-57s. Its autonomy is oriented toward mission execution under contested comms and electronic warfare. It must make tactical choices, reroute, and complete strikes even when linked to a human is degraded. That degree of autonomy applied in a heavy survivable airframe is qualitatively different from the limited semi-autonomy of many current UAVs. Fourth cost profile and strategic intent. Yes, each unit is expensive, but that cost buys a reusable strategic capability, a platform intended for mission sets that change the theater, not for daily policing. Where swarm doctrine accepts loss as attrition, Okotnik B's doctrine conserves assets to execute single war-shaping blows, destroying a radar network, knocking out AWACS, or crippling a sortie base. Economically, it swaps quantity for a single high-value multiplier. Finally, operational implications. Defenders face a different calculus. Layered intercepts designed for many cheap threats are ill-suited to a few fast, stealthy, and mission-flexible hunters. Countermeasures must move from pure shoot-down metrics to integrated detection-resilient networks, decoy strategies and active denial of standoff launch points, and expensive complex response. In short, the Okotnik B is not a tweak on existing concepts. It is a conceptual shift. It asks commanders to consider fewer but smarter and survivable assets that can surgically alter the battle space. Whether that gamble pays off depends not only on technology, but on production capacity tactics and how quickly adversaries adapt. But as a proof of doctrine, the S-70 forces a rethink in a future where drones are ubiquitous, Perhaps the decisive edge belongs to those who build predators, not just swarms. Although the Sukhoi S-70 Okotnik B is a bold statement of technology and military doctrine, Russia's greatest challenge is quantity. Under the pressure of sanctions and tight budgets, Russia may be able to produce only a few dozen Okotnik Bs by 2030 each, costing about 100 million USD, roughly the price of a modern fighter. Compare that with the more than 300 operational Reapers, the U.S. fields the hundreds of Wing Lung's China exports, or the thousands of drones Israel produces. This makes clear that the Okotnik B will never be used for daily patrols or for striking minor targets. Instead, it will be the secret weapon reserved for the highest value missions taking out NATO AWACS aircraft, striking critical airbases in Poland or Romania, or menacing carrier groups in the Mediterranean. These are the targets that define the outcome of a great power conflict, not the skirmishes of attrition. This focus reinforces the unique layered doctrine Russia is adopting where unmanned systems are assigned clearly tiered roles, acknowledging the current realities of drone warfare while preparing for the future. The first layer is the baseline layer, which is disposable and serves as the eyes of the artillery. It performs attrition and daily reconnaissance using cheap commercial drones like Orlan and FPV to saturate the front line, confirming that the $1,000 cost is justified by the simple act of locating an enemy vehicle. The second is the operational layer, which aims to create widespread systemic damage. 
This layer employs long-range kamikaze drones such as Iran's Shahed to carry out terror strikes and create attrition and cost asymmetry for the defender forcing the expensive expenditure of $500,000 interceptor missiles. Finally, at the strategic elite layer, Russia develops the Okotnik B as a rare elite hunter. It is conserved because its $100 million price tag forbids its use in low-stakes skirmishes. Okotnik B is a stealth bomber drone built exclusively for strategic war a scalpel designed to penetrate the most formidable air defenses. It is deployed only when a highest stakes strike is required an irreversible blow against the enemy's command and control or power projection capabilities rather than daily wear and tear missions. This layered approach ensures that every drone from the cheapest FPV to the massive S-70 serves a distinct and optimized purpose in the larger military strategy. The Okotnik B doesn't just represent a new aircraft, it embodies Russia's break from the Western playbook. While the US and its allies have perfected drone warfare through endurance quantity and cost efficiency, Moscow is rewriting the rules with destructive precision. The S-70 is conceived not as a disposable weapon, but as a strategic assassin a scalpel reserved for the most decisive missions blinding NATO's radar network striking AWACS aircraft and threatening high-value airbases across Europe. This doctrine abandons the idea of swarms and attrition in favor of elite survivable assets designed for great power conflict. It's a wager that a handful of highly autonomous stealth bombers can outthink and outlast the enemy's numerical superiority. The West sees this as both impressive and alarming a sign that Russia may be building not more drones but smarter predators. That raises the final question for the future of air combat. Are a few dozen elite costly machines like the Okotnik B sufficient to shift the global military balance? What do you think? Thanks for joining us. As always, wishing you safe and enjoyable flight.